Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Patea, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information, and advice. And today, look who's on the sofa. We are delighted to say Barry Upton's joined. Barry, how are you doing, my man? Very good, thank you. It's a wonderful place. I, lo- I play here uh, once a week. Well, I've been doing it for the last five years. Yeah, and brilliant. it's a great venue. I enjoy well, it. Well, if you're not sure where we are, have a look in the description below. We're here at the classroom. 13-4, and yeah. uh, yesterday was a very, uh, I'd say, emotional day for you. Well, it, the, the thing was, 25 years ago was the release of uh, a song called 5678 by yeah. Steps, yeah. and we spent the previous year putting them together, yeah. trying to get a record deal, and that was the culmination of it all. Wow. And the funny thing was, that the night before the day of the release, um, I was at a concert in the Symphony Hall in Birmingham, and uh, Steve Jenkins, who's the head of uh, Jive Records, who we'd signed to, uh, and we'd signed to a, a company that had the Backstreet Boys, uh, Britney Spears. I thought this is a great, wow, great um, uh, company to be with, you know. And uh, as we're walking out, I said to him, "What do you think? You think it's going to be a hit?" And he goes, "Well, we'll know by Wednesday, you know." I said, "What? Fifty? Oh, there's me thinking <laughs> oh, it's going to be a hit." Yeah. Right. And then he, he suddenly went, mm, "I'm not sure, you know." Oh, I bet your heart dropped, uh, didn't it? it but then Wednesday, it was straight in the top twenty. So brilliant. Well, from then on, it, it became a worldwide hit. I was going to say, wasn't it one of the uh, one of the top selling songs that never made it into the top ten? In the nineties, it was the top selling yeah. selling selling record that, that didn't make it into the top ten. That's right. But you did really well in America, didn't you? Yeah. And well, um, With that song. Well, well, we did Australia. We went to number one. Okay. Uh, Japan went to number one, um, quite, it did pretty well around the world. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, but the, the thing was, it stayed between 10 and 20 for four months. <laughs> so that was better than having a number one record that went straight yeah, in and went and out again. Disappeared, yeah. yeah. Having a, a record that stayed there for four months, I mean, wow, it was fantastic. incredible. Well, I want to talk about your music career, but before we do that, yeah. where are you from? I'm from uh, the south of England. I actually grew up in Luton. Oh, right. But yeah. I ended up in Southampton before Did I came you? to Patia. Wow, so you got to be a Saints fan, I'm guessing. I was. You until, was? Until the last couple of years, and then they've just gone a bit... Well, if it's any consolation, I've just climbed out of my little hole, because I'm an Arsenal fan. So I know this that. Year, this year, I'm happy. <laughs> you must be cock a hoop Oh, mate, honestly, unbelievable. <laughs> so, you're from Southampton, and when you were younger, I mean, did you realise or did you have any foresight that you knew you were going to be involved for the rest of your life in music, or was it, was it something okay, that just happened? There's two incidents that happened. First of all, when I was about four or five, my mother bought... Um, uh, an accordion out from the loft yeah. and she used to play uh, in the war in a, in a band oh, wow. so she, cool. she played this accordion and I went I remember thinking that's amazing to be able to learn to play an instrument yeah. or to be able to play music like that so that's what I started having piano lessons and that, that's what made me understand music yeah. but the second incident that happened was in 1967 uh, yeah, we're old enough. <laughs> I was uh, born that year. <laughs> uh, a, a satellite went up into space, yeah. the early bird satellite, and there was a program on television where all countries, uh, participating countries, yeah. uh, did a contribution to a TV show that was being beamed around the world for the first time. Wow. And the UK's contribution was the Beatles at Abbey oh. Road recording All You Need Is Love. And I was just like, I was like looking Fantastic. at Fantastic. I was going, oh, the first time I've seen in a recording studio. Yeah. Little did I know, I'd spend the rest of my life in recording studios. How cool is that? that was How a, cool is it was that? A, an amazing moment. I so, remember. did you like go to school and, and steer yourself into the music pathway? Did you, did you, or did you like think, do you know what, I don't care about school, I'm going to be a musician? Well, when I left school, um, which was at the age of 16, I didn't go on to higher education, but yeah. I did go to college because I was sponsored by Vauxhall Motors. Oh. I, in Luton, they tended to feed you into Vauxhall Motors. Right. But I had a, a, a small band, then, and we became very successful. Yeah. Uh, weekends, you know, doing working men's clubs, social clubs, and then going on to big dinner dances and stuff like that. Nice. But, but by the age of 21, I wanted to turn professional. Did I, you? I finished my apprenticeship and I, I had a little um, compromise with my father, who didn't want me to turn professional. Right, okay. Because he thought Vauxhall was a, a steady job. That was it. Where you... But as soon as I turned professional, that was it. That was the, my life became amazing. Wow, fantastic. And I mean, you know, we only see like the, the glory side of things because obviously we're not your side of the fence. Right. So like from, from my perspective, we think, oh, you know, that, that band's doing really well, this mm. band's doing it. Mm. I mean, just how hard is it really? I mean, it must be an it's incredible very hard. slog. It's very hard, but the, the thing is, when you get, it, it, I love being creative, mm. right? And it's the creative part of it, which you're not getting paid for at the time. Mm. Or sometimes you are, but, but very often you're not. 
And when I uh, joined Brotherhood of Man, the manager, with Tony Hiller, who was a bit of a stalwart of the music business, yeah. he, he embedded into me that the harder you work, the luckier you get yeah, in the yeah, business. Yeah. And he was right. I've, it's, it's been like that my whole career. Brilliant. And I never stopped. So Brotherhood of Man. Yeah. What, what was all that about? How did that, how did that possibly happen? <laughs> what happened there was I, um, I, I had a, a publishing deal with a, a guy called Wayne Bickerton, who uh, he wrote all the Rubettes, produced the Rubettes records. He had a lovely studio in Marble Arch. Yeah. And uh, I managed to get uh, a little deal with him. Um, I had one single release, which didn't go anywhere. But I had this studio time when uh, he had a big studio and a small studio. In the big studio, you'd get people like The Who, Kate Bush, um, the Hollies, and so of course you'd always go and say Just hello. Bands in, really. You'd always go and say yes, yeah, <laughs> hello. Yeah. Just because you know it's great to meet them. Yeah. God, and yeah. one day it was the Brotherhood of Man. Yeah. Little did I know that one of the guys wanted to leave. Right. Okay. But the you. only reason was because he had a family and the band were touring all the time. Yeah. And I remember them looking at me and they didn't say anything, but they, I, I didn't look unlike him. Oh, right? wow. And then a few weeks later, they were top of the bill at Bailey's nightclub in Watford, where I was then the resident guitarist. Yeah. And they saw me doing little moves on stage, and they chatted to me backstage and said, what are we doing in the studio? And I, you know, I said, well, I'm writing and I'm you know, learning about production and stuff like yeah. that. So they invited me for an audition. And I thought, OK, there's going to be loads of people auditioning. <laughs> and I got there, and, and it was a small office, and I'd learnt the songs. Dead easy songs. Yeah. And I, I stood with them and sang the songs. Five minutes later, I'm in the group. No. It was just as simple as that. Do you think that's because they'd, they'd kind of like chosen you rather you applying? It, they saw me as the ideal replacement yeah. because I, I was doing all the things that Lee, who was the guy I replaced, yeah. and um, I'm still friends with all of them, you know, and they're, they're cool all still friends. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was, a, it was a really nice takeover. You know, he. Mm. he, he they showed me the ropes and they taught me about being professional. Mm. You know, I, th I, I joined a very professional, top level band that al already had number one hits. Yeah, yeah. And so I learned so much in those few years. And they, they were the Eurovision Song Contest. Really, they did. They? Yeah, they yeah. did. So, like, you must have, I mean, did you go to bed that night and sort of like wake up the next morning and think, was that just a dream or was like, has that really just happened? The funny part about it was um, that I. I they weren't one of my favourite groups, you know. I mean, I, I'm a big Beatles fan. They changed fan. your life forever. And T-Rex and all this kind of thing, you yeah. know. Brother of the Man were a kind of middle of the road group. But uh, I, I remember going to say, see my mum. Yeah. And I said to her, I'm going to be joining the Brotherhood of Man. She went apeshit. Did she? Yeah. She just, she said, they're one of my favourite oh. groups. So I thought, oh, well. That's I'm it, I'm in. Do it. I'm, I'm doing, doing it. it. And as I, as I learnt the act with them, and they were great friends, they became great friends. Yeah. And then when we started doing gigs, I mean, we used to have Jeff Beck's PA. Wow. You know, and we were more rocky live than the name suggests or the yeah. song suggests. And we were a great live actor. Fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed every minute that yeah. I spent with them. So you've been from obviously being the musician playing. Yeah. And then you really did change your life, didn't you? Because you then found a certain group that so I'm sure many of, especially our <laughs> age, will go, Man, I know that group. What happened? Well, in the intervening years between early 80s and the late 90s when that happened, uh, because of being with Brotherhood of Man, I learned a lot about production. Yeah. So I became a producer. I was still writing and I did a lot of dance music in the late 80s mm -hmm. and I became a DJ at so Hammersmith Palais and places like that. And then in the 90s, when rave music came in, I got into country music. Wow. And I love the songwriting, uh, the pure songwriting of country music, and I used to go to Nashville a lot. So I ended up doing um, uh, line dance records. Uh, <laughs> you kept that quiet. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's the thing. It, you know, when we were going around trying to get a deal for Steps, which was basically a line dancing group at right. the beginning, okay. and the idea of it was that kids would copy the dances because I saw some kids line dancing yeah. in a venue one day. Yeah. That's what gave me the idea. Brilliant. And um, so I put my experience of dance music and country and I put it all together, plus being in Brotherhood of Man, which had the uh, Save Your Kisses yeah. dance, you know? Yeah, yeah. All of that kind of came together and I decided to put a little band together. And okay, ABBA was two guys, two girls. Brotherhood of Man was two guys, two girls. Bucks Fizz, who I was at that time, yeah, I, I was the musical that. director. Was you? Yeah, oh. <laughs> that was two guys, two girls. So that's why I made it different. Three girls, Three two girls. guys. Yeah, brilliant. And I mean, obviously, you know, guys, you must remember Steps. I mean, 
You, you say a little band, but they turned out to be far from little. It was went far bigger than I could have expected. Yeah. I, it was just a bit of fun for, to start off with. I just thought, actually, people had been saying to me, why don't you write a line dance pop anthem? And funny enough, I'd met, I'm going to name drop here, I was uh, in Nashville once and I met Garth Brooks in his office because Joan okay. Cook, who was, was his secretary, was she was um, linking me up with people. Yeah. And I, I sat there having a cup of tea with Garth Brooks, who at that time was one of the biggest artists in the world. And he told me, he says, the reason he's not so big in England, he wears a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. So, he's, oh. so I told him about that, my, my idea for steps. He says, no cowboy hats or boots. <laughs> it was his it idea. Worked. It worked. <laughs> it, he was 100% he was correct. Well, one of the things, I've been, I've, do you know what I'm really pleased about today? Because I, I mentioned earlier before we did, did this, there's a question I've always wanted to ask. Okay. Because people out there watching, myself included, we yep. just, you know, you go on to... Uh, YouTube or in, in anywhere you want, you just put music on and you listen to it and you think, oh yeah, that was a good track, that was nice, I enjoyed that. Right. I've always wanted to know this, how in the world do you get not only the, the, the verse and the, and the mm, script, right. but also put music to it? What's that, what's that process? How does that work? Because I could, I could write, so I wouldn't even know where to begin to put a tune and I wouldn't even know yeah. how to write. You know, yeah. it's just, how do you do this? Well, I've done a lot of um, uh, songwriting seminars and the first thing I do is I say, what's, what's the first rule of songwriting? And people come up with all these ideas and the first rule of songwriting is, there isn't one. <laughs> That's the first rule, right? There is no, there's, you can write songs many different ways. Yeah. I have my own particular uh, kind of way that I, that I do it and it's been successful for me. Or if I'm writing with another person, if it's a, 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 a two-person song, then it can actually be a three-person song. There's a different way you have to go then. You, then you have to be humble, right? Mm -hmm. In so much as they say, oh, I don't like that idea. You know, you put forward an idea or you put a line, no, that's no good. Really? And you've got to accept it. Now, with you with yourself, you can just fight with yourself. But also, uh, it's a numbers game. The more songs you write, the more chance you've got of coming up with a good one. So do you write the, the, the song first and then add the music to it? Or do you think of a tune in your head and think, oh, I like that, That's, you hum these things out? I mean, how do you do this? Well, different people work different ways, as I said. Um, Elton John, Bernie Taupin, Bernie Taupin sends him lyrics. Elton John will just make a tune up. Other people work with the backing track first. And then, uh, for instance, Brian Ferry or David Bowie, they would, they would do a backing track and then they would come up with lyrics and stuff afterwards. Right? Incredible. My method is I start off with a title. Oh, okay. okay. So, it, like in five, six, seven, eight, I kept looking for that title. You know, what would be a really good anthem? And then it suddenly dawned on me. They always count dances in five, six, seven, eight. Ah. Then musicians go oh, one, two, three, yeah, four, four. Yeah, right? yeah. But if you've got uh, a bunch of dancers, the choreographer always goes oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do they? Oh, there and you go. See, that's how it came about. And that's how that came about. I thought that's a good title. And I, I phoned up PRS. Has anybody ever written a song called Five, Six, Seven, Eight? No. That's it. Okay, so I started with that, and then I knew what kind of song I wanted it to be, and a very up, uh, fast, up-tempo pop song. In fact, there was a song at the time, I'm, I'm give this away to you, uh, there was a song called Ooh, Ah, Just a Little <laughs> yeah, Bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you listen to 5, 6, 7, 8, it's very similar. Right. So I took the style, just the style, I didn't p pinch anything from it, it's a completely yeah. different song, but took the style of that song, uh, married it together with the lyrics that I was, I was making for it, and um, and that's it. That that's, that's very often how I do it. Mm. So like when you're making these 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 songs in your head, and then you're scribing them, and then you're adding the track, etc. I mean, what's the time process? I mean, is it something? I mean, I wouldn't know how long it took. I mean, is it, is it really like so different? Where like one song might take you say ten minutes, and one might take you five years. You know, it's it can work that way. I tend to work fairly fast. Um, the one of the fastest hits that we ever wrote, I wrote with Tony Hiller, the manager of Brother of the Man, was I just signed a deal with name drop again, Simon Cowell, right? <laughs> Did this he is... have his pants up then? <laughs> <laughs> he was very hip then yeah. at the time. Yeah. And uh, he liked uh, Nolan's thing that I did and yeah. um, some other stuff. I met him down at Medium at some music trade fair. Yeah. And uh, he, he said, come to my office on Monday. I went there with my manager and uh, we, I walked out with a publishing deal and he said, spend all this money on a studio. You need to have your own studio. And he was right. I've had my own studio ever since. Fantastic. So I've always worked at home. And people would come to me, and big artists, I've had big artists come into my yeah. house and stuff, and writers and whatever. Uh, but we wrote this song um, called Only Fools Never Fall In Love. And the, 
it was actually, we had Diana Ross in our, the back of our minds, and I was doing, 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 doing. We wrote it in two hours, right? The lyrics, everything in two hours, and that went on to become a top 10 hit. Yeah, yeah. Through Simon Cowell. So, over your, over your career, you've, you've played in thousands and thousands of different places. What's the one that jumps out at you and says, do you know what, that's the place I love the most? Festival Hall. Was it? And because that, and that, well, because it's just such an iconic place, isn't it? Mm. And um, it was not long after I joined Brotherhood of Man, and we were on the t a tour with David Soul, and oh. one and one of the, uh, the, the 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 venues was the Royal Festival Hall. Just walking in there and just looking at it and thinking oh, of the yeah. number of people that have played there, and you know, it's, it's a bit like the Albert Hall, really. You yeah. know, they're, they're they're iconic venues. Yeah. But there is one other as well, which is again with Brotherhood of Man, and that was um, the football stadium in Valletta, in, Mal in Malta. Okay, I, I don't know that. 40,000 people. Packed? And you just go on st stage, and the, there's nothing else you can say. Hello, Malta! <laughs> <laughs> it was packed, it was just an, an incredible feeling. What's your thoughts about Glastonbury? Well, Glastonbury is something I've never, I've never even been to Glastonbury. Yeah, have you not? I nearly did with John Otway. I, I was touring with John Otway for a while, and he, he's a very hip kind of character and yeah. does it quite often. And um, one year, we were going to do it as the band, but it ended up being him as a solo. And that year was very muddy. Right. So it kind of was a blessing in disguise, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you've gone from obviously having an incredible music career, and you've come out here to Thailand. When did you first come to Thailand? Um, it was 2007, and I moved here 2009. I just, f f I love the place. I love Thailand, I love the Thai people. I was looking to get away from the British winters. Okay. I love the climate to start off with. And Pattaya just had everything, and it still has for me. Yeah. Even though some people complain, oh, this is closed down, that's yeah. closed down. No, you've got everything you need here. Yeah. And I think I've heard you say that yes, before. Yes, many times, yeah. yeah. And yeah. people say right now, oh, the city's dead. I'm like, dude, where are you? Yeah. Come out here. How dead. much do you need? Exactly, you know? exactly, exactly. So uh, it would be nice to see a few more tourists, I know, for, for the people who have mm. tourist businesses. Yes. And I feel sorry for them, obviously. Yeah. You know, and and uh, same as this place, you know, it's found it difficult to keep up yeah. during the COVID period. But everything that I ever want is here. The Absolutely. beach, yeah. the, the sun, um, lovely restaurants, yeah. you know, good music everywhere. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. You just don't sit, uh, sit still though, do you? Because like you're still performing. I mean, how many nights a week do you perform? Because everywhere I go, I always see you around. Yeah, places. I'm not doing so much now. I, I, I've decided that, yeah, I'm getting a little bit You say you're doing six days a week now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one or two a week would do for me. You know, I, I do love playing live. I, yeah. I love it. I love playing guitar. I love the, the, the thrill of, pl of having that feedback from an yeah. audience. You yeah. know, yeah. and you never lose that. I think if you're a, if you're a proper performer, you never lose that. I think the one place I really saw you kind of like not excel, but I could just see you were really happy was Ocean Marina and the boat show oh, right. in the evening. You were like just smashing it. It was like everyone was, yeah. the the bay. everybody was just loving it. I was like, yeah. he's so enjoying himself up there. Well, when you've got a, 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 an audience that is giving you back, you know, mm. you, you, they're, and they're in, you can see they're enjoying it. Yeah. And there's big smiles on their faces. I mean, the biggest thrill you get out of it is the end of the night when people come up to you and say, thank you, yeah, how, yeah, how great brilliant. that was, especially weddings. You yeah. know, they say, you made the day, you know? So you've done a few weddings in. Oh, loads. Have you ever seen it kick off? <laughs> I'll tell you one, one wedding. I've got a great wedding story if you've got the time to hear it. Go on. I used to do these weddings in the south of England and they were uh, big high so things, yeah. you know? And I was always ultra professional. I had girls in the band and, yeah. um, you know, we, we were very tight and we were very friendly with the audience, but I never let anybody come up and sing. Because, uh, okay, maybe their friends would enjoy it, but yeah, they, the rest yeah. of them won. Yeah. So, there was one gig where this guy came up and he had jeans on, he had long hair, and, and he said, can I come up and sing a couple of songs? I went, sorry mate, we haven't rehearsed anything, so I can't, no, you know. So we, we carried on. So from that wedding, we, we, we booked to do another wedding a few months later, and uh, the girl came up to me after we'd done our first set, oh great, she says, you're such a great band, but uh, you, we booked you because of that other one. Do you remember that guy that came up to you with curly hair and wanted to come and sing with you? That was James Blunt. <laughs> Sorry, James. <laughs> yeah, check it out. So, oh, yeah, what, what a great one. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't know you, mate. You can just jog on a bit. <laughs> I looked, I thought of it back. I thought, oh, God, it was, yes. Yeah. 
How great would that have been if you oh, could you have got to, you're beautiful, but you don't know, yeah. do you? Could you imagine that? <laughs> so you're out here now, obviously you're enjoying yourself and you, yeah. like you say, you're trying to slow down a little bit. I mean, when you finally do sort of hang the guitar up and say, that's it, I'm done now, will you continue writing songs yeah. or will you mentor people as well? Yeah, no, I've always got loads of ideas in my head for projects mm. and uh, I've done the, the last couple, I did the uh, Barry's Tropical Beach Cafe, okay. which was just a vision in my head of me sitting in my beach cafe and all these girls in bikinis walking yeah, by. Yeah, I see the video. You know? <laughs> yes, we did it, we achieved yeah, it, you know? Brilliant. And now with 5678, it's it's a case of, oh, it's 25 years, what can I do? Steps brought out uh, a, a Greatest Hits album, which went to number one in the mm. UK, which is nice, and all the news programs they were on, they were playing 5678, I thought, maybe I should do a new version. <laughs> So I came up with the idea. I've been seeing some Latino bands down at Sandbar okay. here. Yeah, oh, nice and uh, I suddenly thought I should do a Latino version. Look, it's, it's a, everybody loves the dancing. You know? You're just never going to sit still, are you? No, no. I can see that all over your face. You're never <laughs> going to sit still. Well, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I, I could sit here and talk to you for hours. I love listening to this. You know, your history and your the way you've sort of chiselled out your career and everything. I really could see it. Sadly, we can't. But before we finish, I want to ask you one question. I ask everybody I interview the same question, okay. so you probably know what I'm going to ask right. you. We've got a guy watching the channel. He's never, ever been out here before, has no idea what to expect. So when he lands, I'm going to grab his suitcase, say, son, sit down here, listen yep. to what Barry's going to tell you. What would yep. be your words of advice? Um, just enjoy yourself. Just relax. Don't try and do everything. Just enjoy yourself. And, 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 and it is a relaxing place. You know, I mean, there's a big party scene here, of course. Yeah. But there's so much else, yeah. And yeah. which you you yeah. very often, you know, uh, show with with your your, your vlogs. I've, I've watched them. Mm. I've sat there watching you going around. He really the... is bored. At uh, night time, at <laughs> night time, I love it. After I finished in the studio, I love <laughs> stuff like like your program. And uh, YouTube is the, is the big thing. Hence yeah. my yeah, you, there you go, my so YouTube channel. Well, what, what we'll do, guys, I'll put a link to, to uh, Barry's channel down below. Fab so Baz Music TV. And uh, come and check him out. Mate, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much indeed. Great. It Thank really, you, really has. It's been an absolute pleasure. So there we go, guys. Uh, this is Barry Upton. Come out here. If you do come out here, pretty much I'd say nine out of ten times if you go around some of the bars here, you're going to hear him playing somewhere. He won't <laughs> give up. He's not going to retire. <laughs> Listen, that's rubbish. He definitely will be out. And today... At uh, the, the time of making this video, we're here at the classroom, Soy yeah. 13 board, and you're here quite often, aren't you? Yeah, well, once a week. Once a week. So there you go. Yeah. So if you want to meet Barry, come down. What day is it? Uh, I think it's going to be Tuesday nights we're going to do now. I mean, I've been doing a couple of specialist ones, the Halloween and the yeah. song. But uh, I think it's going to be Tuesday nights. So there you go, guys. So come down on a Tuesday, Soy 13 board. Yeah. Um, I'll put a link to the classroom's Facebook page in the bottom of the description so you can see that. I'll also link to, to Barry's YouTube channel. Jump over there, give him a subscribe and uh, give them a follow, that'd be much appreciated. All right, well, that's it from us, guys. Thank you so much indeed for watching. As always, please remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we bring out a new video. Check out Discord, 19,400 members in there now. It's going from strength to strength, so please have a look on there, and uh, I'll see if I can get Barry on there as well. So have a look on there, completely free of charge. It tells you about what places are open, what things are going on. Everything that we've been talking about today is in there, so have a look on there. And if you'd like to support the channel, there is a membership link down below. Membership starts from as little as 89 pence a month. That's it from me, that's it from Barry. Thank you so much indeed for watching, and please, as always, wherever you are, stay safe.